Kings. Luke chapter number 16, verse number 19. The Bible says there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Our Father, we pray this tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. Heavenly Father, I pray tonight for a few minutes that you might anoint me one more time, God, to preach your blessed word. Recall the things to my heart that I've studied, and I pray, God, in Jesus' name, that you touch us, Lord, help us tonight. And bless your people, God. I pray that there be one lost in our midst tonight, that this hour will be the glad hour that they repent and trust Jesus and be saved by the grace of God. Do what only you can do. Encourage every heart, and we'll thank you and praise you. In Jesus' high and holy name, Amen and amen. amen. Now I realize that when we come to this text, normally we preach on hell. Come on. And the hell is a real place. Amen. And uh, some scholars teach that this story is a parable. Brethren, I submit to you that is not so. Amen. Jesus never named names in parables, right. but he calls Lazarus by name. Amen. Also, the fact that there was a certain rich man uh, denotes the fact that it was not a parable. Uh, listen to me. That means this very hour in hell, there's a man who used to be rich that's now became a beggar. Amen. And in heaven, there's a beggar who's now rich. Amen. 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 Uh, and so we know that hell is a real place and heaven is a real place and Normally when we come to this text, uh, we preach on the reality of hell, and it is a real place. But tonight, <coughs> I want to bring this text to you in a different light, if the Lord will let me, and I want to preach on this thought, it's good to be Lazarus. Hey man, it's good to be Lazarus. I, I want you to notice, first of all, Lazarus' trouble. The Bible said that he laid at the rich man's gate uh, full of sores, uh, uh, begging to be fed with the crumbs uh, that fell from his table. Uh, amen. He lived a life of trouble. Uh, and so will you, man that's born a woman, is a few days and full of trouble. 
love and laid my hands. There, the, the Paul said this, I'm troubled on every side. That's what he said. I, our lives are full of trouble tonight. And Lazarus' life was certainly troubled. Uh, if you study out that word laid, it does not mean that somebody uh, just carried him to the gate and said, best of luck, Lazarus, and left him there. That word laid, if you study it out, it, li it literally means to hurl or to throw away. Somebody said uh, there ain't no hope for this beggar and he wanted the bed crumbs so the world uh, took him to the gate, Brother Robert, and threw him away. He didn't have nobody or nothing. You talk about trouble. Oh. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Can you imagine tonight being in that kind of shape? And the only friends, uh, the only comfort that you have are the stray dogs uh, that come by every night again to lick your sores. Wow. Yeah. Oh. And you're begging to be fed with the crumbs uh, that fall from this rich man's table. By the way, he's clothed in purple and fine linen, which means he's royalty. And the fact that he fed selfishly every day means that every day, Brother Trevor, he had more than he'd ever need. Yeah. Has there anybody in here that you're doing your best to live for God and it's struggle after struggle oh. after struggle and the struggle of your heart is you see people living like hell that seem to prosper oh. and prosper and prosper some more. Listen, Lord. Yeah. Listen, Lord. Amen. Oh. How is it, Brother Trevor, that all the God robbers seem to have all the money? Yeah. Go ahead. And us that are tithing and giving the missions still struggle. I still have trouble, amen. Seem like we're begging for crumbs. And Lazarus is in trouble. Go ahead. Come on. And the rich man is living like a king. And yet somehow, preacher, you want to say it's good to be Lazarus? Go ahead. Yep. yep. Come on. <laughs> because you see, friend, we not only have Lazarus' trouble, we have Lazarus' testimony. Go ahead. Come on. You say, where's his testimony? His testimony is in his name. Has anybody ever looked up the meaning of the name Lazarus? Go ahead, it means one who God helps. <laughs> or the Lord is my helper. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Now when I found that out, Brother Tim, I talked to God just like I talked to you. We're pretty plain with each other. I talk plain to him, he talks plain to me. And I said, Lord, excuse me for saying so, but it don't look like to me. I I can't see where Lazarus is getting much help. Come on. Be honest. And the Lord spoke back and he said, That must mean he's getting help you can't see. Oh, glory to God. I said he was getting help that nobody could see. Hey, things are not the way that I want them tonight. Amen. I'm tired in body. I'm in pain tonight. I've got a thousand things that I wish was different. And I'm watching the wicked prosper. But may I say unto you tonight, my testimony and Lazarus' testimony is the very same. I can say I'm the one that God has. The Lord is my helper. Well, yes, bless the Lord. Amen. Yeah, Lord. Glory. Amen. The Lord is my helper. Amen. I began to study for this message. And I said, Lord, how come we know Lazarus' name when we don't know the rich man's and the Holy Ghost? Took me to Matthew 7, where Jesus in that day would say, Depart from me, I never knew you. 
And the Lord said to me, you don't know him because I don't know him. Now, probably everybody in town knew his name. And when they passed his house, everybody said, that, that's so-and-so's house. He lives high on the hall. He's got it going on. He's got everything that a man could want. And then they they look down and and there's that old beggar still in there. That's what they saw when they looked at the rich man's residence. But when the Lord looked at it, he would say, I don't know that stranger living in that house. But that man laying by the gate. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that man laying by the gate. I know him. Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. I, I, I'm in a personal relationship with him. I'm helping him right regular. Yeah. Whoa. <sighs> Glory to God. You say, well, I can't see where the Lord's helping me. You're still here, ain't you? Amen. Amen. That must mean you're getting some help you can't see. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I already told you the last thing I got out was Lord send angels. And when the park ranger got in there, he said, emergency services, the ambulance has been dispatched. And I said, friend, somebody else was dispatched before I ever knew you was coming. Mm. Glory to God, I'm trying to tell you, he had help from yonder's world that nobody else could see. There might have even been times that he couldn't see it, but he still had it. Hey, glory to God, and we walk by faith and not by sight. Right. And you may not see your help tonight, but by faith you know that all the promises of God and Christ are yea and amen. And you know that he said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Glory to God, whether you can see it or not, things are better than they look. Hallelujah. And the Lord is your helper if you're saved. Amen. By the grace of God. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. The Lord. Amen. The Lord is my helper. I'm the one who God helps. You say, well, you're having a rough time. Yeah, but I'm alive. Amen. My wife's alive. Come on. Ask Blakely what she thought about it. And the fact that we're okay. And my four-year-old little girl said, Jesus did it again. Yeah. Amen. Amen. My God Almighty, I'm trying to tell you, the Lord is my helper. Amen. Oh, glory to God. We not only see Lazarus' troubles and Lazarus' testimonies, but we see Lazarus' travels. Come on. Come on. Because one day <laughs> he would leave that gate. Come on. Mm. Amen. To walk in another. Hey, come on. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo. One day angels would come and carry him into the paradise of God. Amen. Amen. Now notice tonight that the rich man was buried and Lazarus was carried. His burial is never mentioned. So I asked the Lord about that. Come on. And he said, you bury dead people. It reminds me of the old hymn, Brother Tim, I'll never die, just be promoted. Amen. That's right. Amen. If you'd have got word last Saturday 
that I died in that car. The fact of the matter is, I'd have been more alive than I ever have been. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and one day, glory to God, one day, <laughs> I'll make my last move for the trip. I try to spend my life traveling up and down the roads, but one day I'll travel for the last time yeah. and I'll go home. Amen. Paul said it this way He said, If our earthly tabernacle be dissolved, Come on. we have a building of God eternal in the heavens, not made with hands. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> When I first read that, I, I was about a 13-year-old preacher. Just learned to use a strong coordinates. Barely knew how to study, but I, I learned that that word tabernacle meant tent. And my grandpa took us camping in a tent. And my little brother said, I love this. How come we just can't stay here forever? And I got to looking at that tent when he said that, thinking about how this was our earthly tabernacle. And he said, how come we can't just stay here forever? And my grandpa said, because, son, tents aren't made to live in. You just stay in them a little while, and then you go home. And I looked at myself sitting in this chair in this crippled body and I said, glory to God, on, tents ain't made to live in. I'm just staying for a little while and then I'm going home. Amen. 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 <laughs> Before too long at all, I will travel home. And so will you. Heaven will surely be worth it all. Amen. Can you imagine laying out them gates, begging for bread, and then waking up in the paradise of God? Praise the Lord. All of a sudden realizing, Brother Robert, you had all these sores and these wounds. Come on. And you wake up and you look. Yeah. <laughs> And you all of a sudden clean. And when you close your eyes, you was dressed in rags. But when you woke up, you had on a robe. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. When you went to sleep, you couldn't get up. But when you opened your eyes, you stood up. Amen. Well, bless the Lord. I wonder if he said to himself, mm, it's good to be me. Hey, hey. I wonder if it went through his mind. I'm trying to not get ahead of myself, but I wonder as that rich man begged for that drop of water, I wonder if he remembered begging for that bread. And he said to himself, who's the rich man now? Can you imagine? Now we know that uh, Jesus took on an earthly body in Bethlehem. We know he was born in Bethlehem. He did not begin to live in Bethlehem. Amen. Amen. He was Jesus before Bethlehem ever came into being. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> You say, you don't understand that? No, but I know it's so. Amen. Amen. And so, I don't know what he would have looked like, but I know that somehow he opened his eyes and said, there's Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 
And I imagine that it made all those day those days of laying by the gate and being despised and forsaken. I imagine all that was made worth it as he stepped in the paradise of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. He started singing that last verse on if I've got Jesus about going home. And it reminded me of the old hymn. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Amen. Our trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face. All sorrow will erase so bravely run the race till we see Christ. I wonder if he said, it has been worth it all now that I've seen Jesus. Thank you. All my trials, they seem so small. As I look upon Christ, one glimpse of his dear face, and all my sorrows been erased. I'm glad I ran my race now that I see Christ. You see, not only do we see Lazarus' trouble and his testimony and his travels, but lastly, we see the tragedy that Lazarus avoided. Because just on the other side of the gulf, there's a man laying in hell. And he's begging for a drop of water. And he's got five brothers that are on their way. And there's nothing he can do about it. That was one family reunion he was trying to cancel. With all the trouble that I have, and it seems like it's piled upon me this week, I ain't felt good in body. The explorers total that happened on Saturday night, and then this past Friday, the truck quit. And I don't know if it's going to be fixable. Turns out we probably got hooted on that thing. I ain't felt good. She ain't felt good. Offerings have been low. So you ought not say stuff like that. Well, it's real life, y'all. And I've been having a hard time. But in spite of all my trouble... I will never beg for one drop of water in hell. Amen. <laughs> the only thing I'll ever know about hell is what I read about in Luke 16. Because I ain't going for him. And I, amen. I'm tired in this body, but I'm promised a new one. <laughs> Glory. Now, look here, I ain't got time to explain all this to y'all, but you say, how close are we to coming to Christ? Well, I'm not a date setter because he said no man knoweth the hour, so I don't try to set dates. Anybody who does, you stay away from them. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. But I will tell you this, there is a way to kind of discern the times. Now, I'm not going to give you a prophecy seminar tonight. But during the tribulation, maybe part of the moon will rain, they'll erect that third temple and they'll kill that red heifer that's already in the stall right now. Yep. That's right. That's right. And they'll be priests helping everybody go back under the sacrificial law and they're already training people in the hills of Judea to be the priest in the third temple. 
Now, all that happens after the rapture of the church. You, you, you ain't going to see any of that. Amen. We, we ain't going to be here. Amen. Amen. But here's my question. If they're already preparing for things that happen after we leave, <laughs> how soon do we get to leave? Yeah. If they're already preparing for things that happen after we leave, how close are we to leaving? Amen. The tragedy that Lazarus avoided, hell, no matter what, all them people that seem to be doing better than you, I don't believe the hardest thing about hell will be the flames. I believe the hardest thing for the rich man was when he said, son, remember. And he remembered when he had it good. And now he's got nothing. And if we do remember things on earth, I might remember for a minute that I sat here and all the trouble that I endured. But then I look around glory. Yeah. People have told me all my life, I guess when you get to heaven, you're going to ask the Lord why you was in that chair. I said, no. When I get to heaven, I won't care. Even if I didn't get a new body, which I will, but even if I didn't, I ought to be in hell. So if I had to crawl in, Brother Trevor, instead of walk in, as long as I got to crawl to his feet and look upon the one that brought me home, I wonder if old Lazarus said to himself, uh, we just thought I was a beggar. There's a black preacher that used to come on TV. His name, they called him Bishop G.E. Patterson. And uh, he probably didn't believe just like us, but he was God's man. And he said... You might not have a dollar to your name. And he said, you tell people, I'm a child of the king. And they say, well, you don't look like a child of the king. And you just say, well, I ain't come into my inheritance yet. Amen. <laughs> hey, hey. Amen. I am who he said I am. I, I just ain't come into my inheritance Amen. yet. God bless your heart. When we come into our inheritance, we might say all over glory, it's good to be Lazarus. <laughs> I got to sit in this text of the day. I've always said I wanted to sit beside a lot of people at the marriage supper. But I asked the Lord the other day if he didn't care, if he'd let me sit by Lazarus. <laughs> And I said, hey, Lazarus, we ain't laying at no gate begging. We ain't looking for crumbs. Yeah. There comes the king to serve that supper. Yeah. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. What a day. Yeah. If Lazarus could speak to you tonight, he'd tell you, if you've got him, You've got it all. Brother, will you come sing it again? <laughs>